uh, 432. <clears throat> and we will pause when a quorum of the U32 board appears. And just call <laughs> that meeting. And just, and just and call, that, call meeting to that meeting to order once right. there's a quorum. We're getting there. There's, there's three. Okay. <laughs> Coming in, are there? Uh, we, need more. More. we need yeah. one more. We need one more. Yeah. So how do we want to begin? I thought maybe you could do, we could do introductions. That would be fine. Sure. Let me start over here. Since over here. So I'm Steve Luck. I'm a board member from East Montpelier. I'm Darcy Coleman Graves, board member from East Montpelier. Ruben Bennett, board member from East Montpelier. Lindy Johnson, board member from East Montpelier. Oh, Lindy. <laughs> and this is Lisa, who's our board member, secretary. Mm -hmm. And I'm Adrian McGee, I'm the Middlesex representative of the U32 school board. Scott Thompson, the Callis representative on U32. Chris Leopold, um, he'll ask me to attend the, uh, the meeting uh, today at uh, your request to advise you. Thank you for doing so. Thank you. Welcome both superintendent schools. Carl, <clears throat> Carl Whitkey, uh, Will Worcester rep to the U32 board. Go, go ahead, Stephen. Why don't we introduce the people back there? Sure. I'm Stephen Melton. I'm the principal here at U32. Hi, Alicia Leifer, the principal at East Montpelier. Will Baker, I'm a member of the Doty School Board. Uh, Kyle Landis Marinella, just resident of Millsex. Dave Kelly. Uh, David Lawrence, Romney Parent. Brian Dillon, VPR. Brian Pelliaferro, Romney. Are we expecting the Romney board? They were sent two members and they were willing to help share the cost. They, okay. When they said they're working. Chris McVay, well, I think, is coming as well, Brian. He it? just texted and said he can't make it. Can't make it, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, board, you had questions to ask Chris about operational and budget concerns. Mm -hmm. Ruben, I hope I paraphrase this right because I know that he's very too used. This is pretty much the same motion um, about and teacher contracts and how to get us yep. to teacher contracts with the current situation, which we're in with so where we are with posting budgets. You may want to give us a little bit well, more than that. I'm wondering, um, since we have a East Month Pure Quorum and we're waiting for some others, I have um, what, what may be an East Montpelier specific question, although I think it would relate to U32. Um, we're not a party to the lawsuit, so if there was an injunction or a stay, how would that affect us since we're not a party to the lawsuit? Um, <clears throat> you don't have to be affected, a party to the lawsuit to be affected by the lawsuit. Um, if uh, my understanding is that Judge Mello has issued a decision today, I, I received a telephone call on my way here. I haven't seen the decision. Um, I've been told that he did not grant the injunction. Um, other than that, I have uh, no additional information about it. But, but if he were to grant an injunction, um, an injunction would enjoin the um, state board order from going forward in the context of um, the uh, the unified district um, in that context, and it would, you know, he could give a have given a narrow um, injunction and. Uh, permitted planning to happen, or he could have given an injunction where he prohibited any activity okay. going forward relative to uh, the, the unified districts. That answers my question, Ruben. And I just suggested it because it related to our town, not, not, perhaps not in any other towns. So I assume you're up to speed on where Washington Central is right now. 
I, I know where the where the unified district stands. I have a have a sense from talking to Bill um, where the respective town districts are in the context of uh, the budget processes and where U32 is, and also uh, with respect to the issue of issuing contracts. Um, and uh, it's my understanding that <coughs> um, a portion of the transition board has been sworn in. Um, uh, but not all members in the transition board has not begun to engage in any transitional activities um, as of today. So, uh, so if you said that you, it's your understanding that the judge has issued his ruling, how long will that take to be public? Should that be tomorrow, later today, tomorrow? How, how does that work? I, I, <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Kelly may know more than I do, but because I'm not representing any parties involved in that case, um, I would think the decision is public, and I would assume that perhaps by later tonight you may be able to access electronic uh, copies, um, either via Vermont Digger or uh, other means online. I think it's already in the paper. There you go. So from our perspective, Steve actually put it best on Saturday. We're, we're, wanting to make sure that we operate the school, that the school is operational. We're basically trying to protect the operation of, of our schools. Um, and so given all of the vagaries that we find ourselves swirling around in, the, there are a couple of pretty particular questions. Um, one is um, around the operational budget for next year and, and what our um, possibilities and responsibilities for that are. Um, and the other is around the teacher contracts and what our responsibilities and possibilities are there. And if anybody would like to jump in and, and summarize better or modify what I'm saying, please yeah. feel free to. I just say we need budgets, one way or the other. Okay. And we need to be able to issue contracts. teacher contracts. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because there, that one have. has, uh, I perhaps arguably, more pressure behind it because my understanding is that by May 15th, April. April. April 15th, sorry. Um, that contract basically has to be signed, sealed, and delivered. Um, and so I think we're all feeling a little overwhelmed because I'll speak for myself. I'm looking down the barrel of an 87.5% potential budget, and I'm trying to figure out how that works with signing a teacher contract and, or, you know, Personnel is the single biggest expense in any school district. So where does that where does that put us? And um, well, let me say at the outset that irrespective of the of the litigation, <clears throat> um, I, I think that the districts in Washington Central would probably feel some anxiousness anyway, just because it's the timeline. Um, from the State Board issuing an order on November 30th for the districts to become uh, operational, the unified districts to become operational by July 1 <clears throat> is a pretty ambitious timeline in terms of the amount of work that needs to be done um, and uh, in planning for oper operations and transition. There are a few of the unified districts in the state that um, unified through the voluntary merger program that had a similar timeline, but the majority of districts have had, you know, almost a year or in some cases almost two years of, of transition planning um, for them to, to go through what um, ostensibly uh, you would have had seven months to go through. So let me first deal with the, the issue of staff, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll 
provide you some information. I think ultimately the decisions that you make um, are the the decisions of the each of the boards, and I'll also include the the transition board. There's some uh, language in the state board um, order and the articles of agreement that that empower the um, the transition board to, to do some um, work that I think falls beyond what was initially envisioned. Um, first, a number of the districts, unified districts that went through the voluntary merger program, the forming districts or the town school districts and the union high school district went ahead and issued contracts in the spring of their merger year. And if you did that and nothing held up the unified union, those employment contracts would be um, the responsibility of the new unified district on July 1 unless there's a, uh, a court order um, ruling that the uh, uh, the state board order is um, unconstitutional or illegal in some respects. Um, so, you, you know, either you can issue those individual employment agreements and then they would be assumed uh, by the unified district, or you can issue those contracts and if there's um, a court order um, or some other action that might take place, a delay by the State Board of Edu uh, by the State Legislature, for example. Um, those individuals would still be employed by you and, and um, things would go forward um, seamlessly in that, in that respect. <coughs> Conversely, a decision could be made um, conceivably um, uh, by your um, transition board um, and there's some as I said there's some language in the articles of agreement that empower them to do some things beyond the purely transitional responsibility before a new board is uh, is situated um, so one I think you have authority to, to issue those employment contracts um, I think if you decide to do that you may want to um, include either a memo with each contract uh, to the individual teacher. So are you saying that the individual boards have the authority? Or I think the, the individuals, the no, board? the invi individual boards have that authority. Okay. Okay. Um, and Thanks. as I said, it, you know, under the voluntary mergers, town school boards have done this. To issue a, a memorandum that explains the basis of the contract, um, uh, you might want to wait close to April 15th uh, before you do that to see if there's any more information either from the state legislature um, or from the litigation which may shed more light uh, on this and I think that's I think that's important uh, to, to provide that <coughs> excuse me that opportunity and secondly you may also want to consider putting some language on the contract that further advises um, uh, the teacher of the nature of the offering. Um, and at that point, you know, I would use the best information that you have available, again, depending on what's happening with the legislature or with the litigation. Um, so would anything further need, need to be done with a merger to transition those or is it just automatically assumed those contracts or are they just assumed by the merge district so if the, if the merge district becomes operational on July 1 as it as it's supposed to do under the state board order those contracts are automatically assumed, assumed so, okay. by the new the new district there's no further action that's required <coughs> um, I won't go into a lot of history, but but uh, ten years ago, the the section dealing with um, 
merged school districts used to require a, a, a study committee to make a decision about how you were going to staff the school, whether you were going to go out and hire new teachers, were you going to just hire the teachers you already had, what were you going to do, and, and that section uh, is no longer law. And, and so you assume the responsibility for the educators that are under contract, um, whether they're teachers, whether they're administrators, or support staff <coughs> employees. Um, if they have a if they have an employment agreement um, as of July one, um, that becomes the responsibility of of that unified district. Okay. So could I? Explore that same sure. concept a little further. Do they have? Do you want to pause and? We still don't have one. Oh, you don't. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <though. laughs> so, I'll, I'll frame it under existing law with a budget that fails by voters, um, and I'm, I'm, well, I won't say I'm sure. It's likely that there's been a situation where, as of April 15th, when contracts are supposed to be at least for our district issued, a budget hasn't been approved. In that situation, typically, would contracts be issued for the existing staff or for the staff that was budgeted for in the budget that failed? I would tell you it depends on the reason the budget failed mm -hmm. and it depends on the school board. There are some school boards in the state that when a budget fails, they will identify a very small number of potential reduction in forces if they're going to cut a pro, uh, cut the staff um, and then propose a budget. There are also school boards in the state that will take a budget back to the voters um, with either no cut or very modest non-staff cuts um, uh, in them. Uh, I think the in my experience, the general philosophy that most boards have is to not totally rethink the staffing of the school at that point, um, but to uh, make very, very selective cuts, if any, in staffing when the budget fails. It, it, I don't want to say every circumstance is unique. They are, but, but, but I'd say that's sort of a general sense that I have from interacting with boards about how they look at what happens after a, uh, a budget's failed. I think what, and I can't speak for, for everyone, but I think what concerns our board is if a budget isn't in place, and I won't get the date right, um, sometime late spring, then um, you operate under the 87 and a half percent of the existing meter. Um, so if it becomes likely because of the time frame that we're going to have to operate at least initially under that budget, it's trying to balance what's prudent on offering contracts and the knowledge of, um, I'll say it this way, I would fully expect a budget at some time is going to be passed that's not going to be anywhere near 87.5%. But it, it becomes, for me as a board member, a, a bit of a juggling guessing match where, you know, and I know you're not going to tell us how much risk to assume, but helping us make our decision on what's the risk we might assume. Does that, am I making I, myself understand? You are. I guess I'll, 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 I'll throw in a, a little bit of a monkey wrench to that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the 87% the is state statute as it applies to the East Montpelier School District yeah. or as it applies to U32. If the new district starts out the year without a budget, I think there's a, a valid legal question about whether or not that 87% limitation applies to them because it's based on spending the prior year. <coughs> um, and uh, I, I, I've suggested that I think that uh, uh, the state needs to address that issue 
um, and they ought to address it in a in a uniform way for um, for all school districts uh, that are in uh, in a cer similar circumstance um, as you are right now, um, and uh, I. I think it's an area where the, the agency needs to uh, to weigh in and, and perhaps um, get a formal opinion from the Attorney General's office rather than rely on the opinion of um, different school attorneys around the state. I mean, I think that it's, it's a different circumstance uh, than it, it would be for, for each of you. Arguably, you can say, okay, let's take the Let's take the cumulative total of all the budgets within Washington Central, and um, the new district could borrow up to 87% of those. Um, there's also a good argument that that, that shouldn't bind uh, the new district either. Um, so I, I, I think there's a need for some communication about that issue, both probably within the, the boards that are grappling with it, as well as um, I think also a role um, to be communicating with the uh, agency of education. And I guess my question is, if we warn our local budgets for a vote on April 9th, and then subsequently we're told we have to merge, and so we have to vote on the unified budget, that work? <laughs> right. What well, happens it, to that original? What, yeah, it, it, it does in the context that, that if <clears throat> if there is not a court order, let's say by July one, um, ruling that the state board order is um, illegal or unconstitutional, or alternately there is a order from the court um, ruling that um, the state board order is legal and is constitutional. <clears throat> By operation of the state board order, the town school districts and U32 under your articles of agreement seize educational operations and the new district assumes responsibility for all educational operations as of July 1. And if we are not able to vote a budget in by that time because of the timing of all of this for the unified district? So I think one, just as a, at, at the outset, if you look at, take the, uh, a calendar right now, by the time Washington Central is able to hold an organizational meeting and then warn an election for school directors who can warn a budget. <clears throat> I think it's theoretically possible that you could have a budget by July 1, but it would literally mean that Boards have to make decisions at the earliest possible moment they can make decisions and also that the warnings are published and posted and that the publishing in particular works just perfectly and smoothly to enable that to happen. I, I mean, I, it, it requires that type of uh, lockstep movement. So it's so, it's possible, but the fact that you don't but not but the fact the fact that you don't have a budget, let me let me back up and go back to so let's assume there was no litigation. You could still be in a scenario where on July one you wouldn't have a budget in place because let's say the voters on April twentieth at a at the first annual meeting of the district didn't approve a budget. Mm -hmm. And that the board either warned a second budget or the board took a month to evaluate why did that budget go down and what do we need to do about it. <coughs> Excuse me, and wasn't able to warn a second budget vote until 
um, July 5th. So it's, it's under a, a voluntary merger situation, you could still have a scenario where a new district would not have a, a warned, legally adopted budget on July 1. And that's when you get into the, the, the authorization that a school board has authority to, uh, to borrow funds in anticipation of revenue. So uh, maybe my question may almost be more for Bill, but operationally, if we find ourselves in what feels like a more and more likely scenario, right, that we're going to run into this July 1 deadline, do we... Do we operate at 87.5% on day one? Or do we operate on, or can we operate on some sort of assumption of risk, basically, that we're going to do something better than 87.5% at some point before we run out of 87.5% of our money? But I just heard him say, that the 87.5% for the union district may not doesn't make sense. No, I, I understand. May not apply, but, 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 but I think so the question is what if it does? Is that what I hear we, you asking? So I, I tend to, I, I want to be very methodical, and I want to play, okay, what's the worst case scenario? And how do we walk through the worst case scenario? So in my mind, the worst case scenario, which we're trudging toward um, is that we find ourselves on July 1st without a past budget. Maybe we have past local budgets um, and maybe that's, and maybe there's a question there, maybe that's a way to hedge our bets. Um, so the first question is would that hedge our bets? Like if, if we have passed the U32 budget and we have passed an East Montpelier budget and we've passed a Callis and right, everybody's passed their budgets, it sounds like that might protect from that 87.5% position come July 1, presuming that they pass. It may lend some support to that. Um, I would need to, to uh, check Rutland Northeast did a voluntary merger on a very tight timeline a couple of years ago. <clears throat> um, and it may have been through their articles of agreement that their articles of agreement specifically provided that the town budgets, they were envisioning that, that the town school districts would be voting on budgets because of the tight timeline. The merger vote wasn't until late January or February. Um, and they had warned, I believe they had warned tight uh, town budgets before that. Their articles of agreement may have provided that the town passed school budgets that year would constitute in combination the budget for the newly formed district okay and I can check on that for you with uh, and get back to bill that and if great. that's the that case advise you of that yeah. um, alternately I can I'll find out whether or not they did something in presenting their budget to um, create that basis for them so okay. I'll, I'll, I'll check that out so then that brings me back to the operational question which is on July 1, are we operating at, we can only spend 87.5% per day, for argument's sake, of what we would ordinarily have done? Or is our bucket of money that's, is it that we can basically run the school until March? So that's the decision the board needs to make. I can tell you that you kind of have it correct, Ruben. You can, you can run at 100%. Laura's calculated roughly that somewhere into March, to, within March of 2020 to April, early April, there would be, we would run out of money. That's where we would run out of somewhere, money. Somewhere in that area. Okay. The, um, but those would be decisions the board would have to make. You could cut, 
you can cut down expenses too and try to prolong that time period. Right. It's I'm a just trying it's a to. It's a cash flow I'm issue. Trying to determine what level of panic we need to be feeling here to be <laughs> completely frank. Um, if we started the year with the eighty-seven percent limit, can we then hold the budget vote after July first? to come up with a new budget that supersedes that 87%. Yes. Yes. And yes. yes, I mean, what? <clears throat> let, me, let me go back again, because I, wa I want to, just so you understand, I think it helps reinforce it. If, if this was a voluntary merger and, and your budget was defeated, you have a legal obligation to keep voting mm -hmm. until you're able to establish a budget. And the same thing is true here, so that if you don't have a budget, on July 1, because of the timeline, you still have an obligation to establish a budget, and <clears throat> the expectation would be that you know, you're going to vote in early July um, to establish a budget for the district. And once that budget's established, that supersedes any spending right. plan that, that you may have imposed okay. upon yourselves. So what I'm hearing is that July 1, we need not necessarily panic if we get to October and we're still stuck in a mess of not getting anywhere, then we should start to be pretty concerned about, about what we're doing. Probably I'll, we'll be much more concerned earlier than that. But um, have any districts under forced merger, to your knowledge, completed this work on time? So I believe there have been five organizational meetings that were adjourned before the meeting was um, concluded. <clears throat> um, I believe that in Lamoille South, um, they're operating on a dual track. Um, they are, um, the districts in Lamoille South are part of the uh, uh, one of the lawsuits um, against the AOE <coughs> and the state board. They, um, the dual track is that they have um, conducted their organizational meeting, they've had a transitional board, and they are continuing to plan. So they're planning for, for the a, worst They're planning for, the, for the unified district so that in the event that the litigation isn't successful, they're in a position to go forward with the unified district. Alternately, if the litigation isn't successful uh, or is successful, they're in a position where um, they can the, proceed. the two districts are able to proceed there. Okay. So what is the downside for us of mourning our local budgets in, on April 9th? <clears throat> At this point, I think the, the, the downside is that you may have confusion with some of your voters. Um, <clears throat> but, I, but I think candidly, um, since the state board order and the ensuing litigation, I think that there's been confusion with, <clears throat> with voters and part of the population anyway about, um, about all this. So I don't, at this point, I think it's a, a, probably a prudent thing to do, but I think that you need to, to make a decision about that. Obviously, if, um, if Judge Mello rules that the, the state board order is valid and the legislation is valid, um, you know, your, any town passed or U32 approved budget <coughs> at that point, forgetting the circumstance that I talked about with Rough and Northeast, um, that action would on June 30th become become void. Um, Without having to, to do anything else, like ha not having to rescind it in some way? Correct. You wouldn't have to rescind it. So there's legal precedent. The, that yeah, I mean, and, and you know, part of, part of the other thing is that because of the way the state funding works um, under our current funding system, 
you know, it's very different than things were 35 years ago. You're not passing your budget and then going to your town offices and telling them how much money they have to raise <coughs> to support your local budget. That information is communicated to the AOE. The AOE does their calculations. Okay. They send them to the tax department. It then goes from the tax department to the various respective municipalities. So, <coughs> um, presumably, at, at at some level, unless there's a an order from Judge Mello to the contrary, um, you know, the state is going to say, "Oh, we can't raise money for Town School District A." because on June 30th, they're supposed to go out of existence. <clears throat> and there's no court order that says that doesn't happen. Um, that's, that's probably the other <clears throat> clear nuance to understand in this, is that the, there'll be a role with, that the state's going to play in, um, in this, in the context of raising, um, communicating the revenue that needs to be, to be raised through the uh, uh, the education funding system to support the various budgets. Brian has a oh, um, so let's say that the teacher contracts are issued on April 15th and then a budget fails. And the only way to pass a budget is to alter staffing, basically alter the contracts. What what position would that put the school, uh, whether it's individual school boards or a unified school board in at that point? <clears throat> it, at this point, the unified board um, I don't think is going to be either the transition board and there's not going to be a unified board in place by April 15th. So I don't think that they're going to be able to make staffing decisions. So staffing decisions, I think, realistically, um, unless there's some joint conversation about it, staffing decisions are going to be made by the town, town school boards. Um, and in a voluntary merger, you know, those are sort of made in consultation with each other um, anyway. It's not divorced. Um, if the budget needs to be cut, you're not going to be able to, to touch personnel after that point, <clears throat> unless candidly you go to the, your association and you essentially have a dialogue with them at some level between now and April 15th and either seek to, one, um, extend the date based on these extending, extenuating circumstances or alternately um, talk to them about some other mechanism. Um, Could, but it's, it, uh, there are districts in the state, forget about mergers, there are districts in the state where they're, on an annual basis, they don't necessarily know <coughs> when they they vote um, their rift date is either before they vote or it's very shortly after I mean it's it's um, so there are a couple of districts in the state that have um, April meetings annual meetings and they're issuing contracts about April 1st um, and so when they vote on the budget, they've fundamentally already made a decision about staffing levels and made a decision that if they have to cut their budget, it's going to come either out of non-personnel costs or to the extent they're going to cut personnel costs, it's going to be on the basis of not replacing individuals who have resigned um, or left um, <coughs> your employment. There's nothing that is there. Could we, I mean, if that situation happened where we can, could we? 
use the capital, the our, not capital, our funds to fund balance. Uh, fund balance to offset that for the year so that uh, your fund balance from 2018 or your anticipated right. fund balance on June of 19? Yes. Which one? The 19. The 19. <clears throat> you could. You'd have to ask your voters for approval to do that if it's the town school districts. Understand that, uh, again, assuming that assuming that the new district commences educational operations on July 1, uh, there's no court order and there's no postponement from the legislature. <clears throat> on July 1, the new district assumes all of your fund balances and your assets. And so if you have a fund balance for this year, that's going to become their fund balance. So this is what I'm hearing as a board member. Um, boards can issue contracts. Well, we have to issue contracts in the 15. We can issue contracts based on what we think the budget's going to be. And if the, that becomes a budget, then everything's fine. The budget comes in less than that. We've already hired the people. We assume the risk of we need to find savings in other than personnel costs. That's correct. Okay. I, I think that's <clears throat> the question was what's the risk in proposing budgets right now? That, I think that's probably the risk. But the, 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 at the same time, we clearly point out you're going to have to issue contracts on April 15th anyway. So do you do that with a budget plan in mind, or are you doing it without regard to, to what the, the budget plan might be? So there, <clears throat> there's a risk, but there's a risk in doing nothing. I guess I have a question for Lori and Bill. When you're thinking about the merged district budget, are you basically taking the six school budgets now and putting them together? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. That's what the executive committee instructed us back in August to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're still following that plan. Which um, to me makes sense this year to do that. Yeah, that, I mean that's what, it's ultimately up to um, a merged board to right. determine what the budget is, but the executive committee back in August said have a two-track plan, have one that does individual and one that would put all the budgets together. Um, okay. And we would advise you, uh, I know the U32 meeting is on Wednesday, so we're ready to tell you what percentages staffing costs are, fixed costs, and all of that, so you know that information and can have a clear, um, and have clear figures on what those, because I mean, that's kind of where, where Ruben's going right now, is like, so how, I know the next question, which is, so how much are all the staffing costs? How much are the fixed costs? What percentage is that of this year's current budget? Yeah, those I mean, are, we, and we were, Laura and I were working on those numbers. this morning. We know we need to dial them in more than we have them right now because we literally were just doing calculator on the table. But we want to get a little bit clearer with all that. Right, because I'm just sort of thinking ahead. If we pass local budgets and this merged district goes through, we then have to pass a merged budget. Which means and if that one passes, we're all set. If right. it doesn't pass, then we have more to play with because it's a bigger budget and more people. It's so just as tight, though, as everybody right. 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 It's yeah. not. It's yeah. not. I don't want to say that. Yeah. I'm trying not to exactly. editorialize, but I'm going to editorialize on yeah. that one. Well, I appreciate so, that. Bill, the history of passing the seven budgets or six budgets is on is our side. How, how often have they been voted down when they've been voted individually recently? Recently, since I've been here, there's only been one, okay. and that was Berlin's. Uh, for the full budget, and five years ago, Laurie, or six was when we had to have the two vote because they were over the expenditure in Berlin. Yeah. And so the second part of that budget yes. failed, yeah, but then right. came back. Yeah. Both of them came back pretty quickly. They came back on the next vote, and with 
minor cuts. That's, I thought the history was pretty positive as far as voters supporting our school. Hey, so, yeah. I, I have. Uh, I'm sorry, no, no, um, please Mr. go ahead. ahead. I, um, I just like to underscore the interest in the Rutland scenario that you were talking about. Um, because, I, as you know, our situation is rather volatile. And the forced merger is not wildly popular. So it's not impossible that we would have a situation where the individual school budgets were passed, and then if we were to, you know, unveil a merge budget, that it might be voted down just out of spite. Um, so if we were able to actually have um, have it set up so that the the individual budgets would just carry over automatically, that might be a um, no, I can't believe I'm saying this. That might be a benefit for the merged district. I, I just underscored my note about Thank getting you. that information. But that would still need to be voted on as an article from by the towns, right? Because it's an adjustment to the default articles, so the towns would have to vote on so that. They have to They're going to pass a vote one way or they another. Have to vote on <laughs> right. Right. Anyway, uh, so you would have to well, include that. I'm just saying that yes, you're if there's right. spitefulness there, it might be. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's going to come out. Yeah. So, so my question is, so we we're pretty sure that we're past all of the deadlines for having a transitional board and a functioning WCU USD district on July one, but the law says <coughs> that. As of July 1, the Unified Union District is in effect. Is that correct? That's correct. So, hey, let me back up. Pre presuming I want, I want that there's no stay, right? <clears throat> it, it's not correct. Okay. It's the state board order. <clears throat> and, you know, the state board order was issued pursuant to a law, but, but <clears throat> it. it I okay. mean, you're not going to find that in state statute. It's in the state state board order. Okay, and, fair enough. And uh, your articles of agreement. But barring some legal injunction or a stay, the Washington Central Unified Union School District entity exists as of July 1, is, even though it's not organized. It, uh, where, where it I'm, legally exists today. Okay. It, it's just not... <clears throat> fully operational and on July 1 it becomes fully operational whether it's it organized becomes, or not and it be and correct and it becomes okay. solely responsible for the education of uh, of the students in Washington Central <clears throat> and the fact that it okay. might not have a budget would be the same as if a town voted their budget down and couldn't get one passed until July after July 1st. correct Correct. The only the only difference in that regard is just the issue about <clears throat> does that eighty seven percent apply? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm hearing that we should issue contracts on April fifteenth, and I'm hearing that we should warn our local budgets. I don't think we have it's anything not, to lose by It's not June. precisely what I hear. Right. I'm hearing. It's up to us if we want to assume the risk to, to issue local contracts. I can speak as an individual, I am. Uh, but th that means the board's assuming a risk that we, um, we could find ourselves in a situation where our, our personnel costs um, exceed what we thought they were going to win the budget. Uh, and, uh, and I think those are board discussions. I don't think we need legal advice to do that. Um, and I, what I would, what I would say, I heard on the local budgets is there's nothing to preclude it. Um, the risk is just potentially generating more confusion. 
um, and then it would just be up to each board if we're comfortable. You are? Uh, well, Scott, but I mean, that's a discussion that yeah. we don't need legal counsel yeah. for. Yeah. It's just, is the board, you know, are, are we concerned enough or not concerned enough? And then, you know, warn and hold a local board. I'm not hearing anything that's from, from legal advice that there's any right. huge risk if we, there's no legal risk. Would that be a fair statement? If we warned of East Montpelier local budget and the town voted on it, and if it stayed, it stayed. If we had the unified union, it went away. It just went away. I, I, I think you're correct. Okay. The, the only thing I'd like to add is I do think there's a risk in no one issuing contracts. I mean, I think that either the town and the U32 board need to issue contracts or the transitional board needs to say, we have to do this. We believe that we have the authority to do it under the Articles of Agreement um, in the absence of anyone else being able to meet this contractual deadline. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, I'll leave it there. And th if we do get to the point where we present the full budget, it's the combined vote total, not by town, right? So Correct. it's if if one town, nobody, I, everyone in the town voted it down. It, it would still be based on the overall vote. According to the draft articles of agreement, it's handed to us that are commingled votes. Okay. So you wouldn't even articles. you wouldn't even know right. what town. Okay. The town total. And but also just to be clear, even if it's not commingled. It still is a the aggregate vote okay. of the district. It's not like presenting articles of agreement where each individual community has to approve the articles. So no or time would have a veto power, it's, basically. It's the, okay. it's the total votes cast. That's what I thought. I so it would really function the same way the U32. It functions the same way U32 does now. Okay, I, I assume so. I, I thought so. I, it's, it's my understanding. I just wanted to make sure. One question. There's nothing with regard to school finance that's comparable to like the Federal Anti-Deficiency Act, where if you go over the appropriation, you're personally um, strung up by your thumbs. So <clears throat> under Vermont law, it's, it's generally um, school boards um, have been recognized as having the authority to overexpend uh, their budget. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, I think it's it's not a decision that any board takes lightly, and, and it's usually based on highly unusual circumstances, um, as, as opposed to we just wanted to to build a law. To build a law. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a question that's not necessarily exactly in sort of the parameters of this discussion, so it's around hiring. Is that, you guys okay with me asking? If you're paying for part of this, I guess you're yeah. right. Wait, to, I'm watching the clock. Yeah, yeah, three yeah. more minutes or four more minutes? Yeah, let's, yeah. hopefully Go it's ahead. a quick question. So we're in, the, we're in the process of hiring a new principal. And um, okay. if this, if there is no stay, if the merger goes through, um, how does that work in terms of uh, sort of offering the, approving the hire, offering the contract to the principal? Uh, who has that authority? Would it be with the local board if it's operating still within the, up to June 30th? Or does that fall to the authority of the new district? Uh, What's the timeline? That, you, that the high, that the board's on right now. What are we? In April? We're going no. for our first to second week of April, often. <coughs> I'll just quickly go back to the, the distinction I've been drawing. If it was a voluntary merger, it would be have be, be done by the the board of the new merged district, um, and it probably would be done in consultation with with your board, but it would be done together. I think um, 
in the circumstances that you have, I think it would be um, difficult for that to happen relative to the timeline that you're talking about to um, involve the, the transition board. You certainly, there certainly could be some consultation and communication about them. Um, <clears throat> one could question your issuing a contract um, for next year, but again, I think based on the circumstances, it's, it, it would appear reasonable. How's everybody feeling? Feel like we have our questions answered? I'm seeing what looks like consensus. I'll get back to Bill with that other information. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. And I'll ask Chris to put it in writing so we just need to email so you guys can all have it right yep. away. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Well. I know the East Montpelier is going to have a small discussion just about next steps because the other three boards had a chance to talk about a warning. Um, I need to run to get up to help Berlin with their meeting tonight at 6 o'clock information. Okay. Uh, Lisa will stay here for the continue minutes for you and Lori can probably stay five minutes or so to help you if you need any questions about time. That we, we risk the confusion and warn a local budget and the explanation to the community is we want to be able to have parallel tracks operating concurrently. Okay. Just, and despite the, the recent uh, ruling, if that's in fact accurate, um, oh yeah, of course, um, the legislature could still take some actions. So we're at the point now where we understand enough and we want to hedge our bets and we want to operate on parallel tracks. Yep. Um, now, when it can be warned, just because of things lately, I think there should be a, we can tentatively pick, but we have to be mindful of what the town clerk is going to mm -hmm. do for ballots yeah, and all that stuff. Um, so I think April 5th is exactly 30 days from tomorrow. I think that would be. And do we think it's fair to ask Rosie to do that? I, I, I'm wondering if other towns are going for that date. That might, it makes sense if other towns I, are going I, I, All I'm trying to do is no, be mindful I, of the I, town clerk. Because then you April need. April 5th is a Friday. You need, yeah, oh, but, no. but, you, you, that but you need to have an opportunity for absentee ballots to right. be distributed <clears throat> and the absentee ballots to be returned. You need to have time for the yeah. ballots to be printed. Um, so is April 5th even It's a Friday. It's a, yeah, it's April 9th Friday. is the day the other boards are kicking. Have kicked April 9th? Yes. Mm -hmm. So today. So there would be an assumption based on the other boards that it's you could legally get ballots printed and distributed and well, absentee ballots and meeting all the requirements of the law? They're ahead of us, though. They've been doing this work already. I know. So I think we so would have to I, check I think Rosie. None of them have done it yet. None of them have. No, I mean, they're all, they're all meeting this week. U32 will meet Wednesday. Um, East Mount, well, I'm just trying to be mindful. We Wednesday. can say whatever we want. Right. Yeah. But can the town, <clears throat> we don't want to say, let's want right. a meeting for Correct. April 9th, and the town office says we let's, can't get ballots printed and distributed and let's meet the requirements. Right. Thing. Yeah. Let's okay. ask Keep Rosie. Yeah. And, and <laughs> she thinks that's feasible. And we'll be, we'll be in a warned meeting anyway. Yes. Or we can warn a meeting. No, we're in a warn. No, we're in a warn meeting already. So the decision could be made tomorrow. Are you going to be there? You? No, I no, don't think there. I will be. Okay. But I, I'm. I think I hear that we agree that it's proof. And if the other boards are looking at April 9th, it would make sense um, informally that that's what we would approach Rosie mm -hmm. with tomorrow. Rosie being the town clerk. Um, approach Rosie with tomorrow just to say this is what we would like to do is, is there enough time to get ballots printed and properly distributed whatever has to happen and assuming that she says yes then we go with that, that vote on the ninth. because in my mind what that covers is um, the legislature because this the Senate could say mm -hmm. you know we agree with the house and we're going to do a one-year delay and if that's the case, then we'll need a local budget. And is there also going to have to be a vote on articles of agreement? 
Yeah, some but, it, them, yeah. but that can but that's happen. A different question. And that can happen the same time as we vote the. I think we can as we the vote board. in the board, because okay. I think what we talked about on Saturday is that the transition can warn the meeting about the articles, right? The transition we don't is board is no. There will not be a vote on articles of agreement. In Okay. Oh, no, I'm just saying. No, not the ninth. I meant there's going to when be we, more voting going down. Gonna be, so every we, time potentially, we voting, it's costly. There'll be no. more than one. Vote. Yeah. No, I, I was, I meant that. It cost me. Power. The transition it costs board can warn a meeting. Yep. Potentially at the same time as the vote for the. Board no, I members. think particularly if we're hearing other boards are all looking at April 9th. You're not hearing me. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we, after the injunction or the ruling on the injunction, we have to then schedule the meeting for the organizational meeting for the board. The transition the, board does. Right. right. Well, no, the transition board doesn't. It because It's not the us. The Secretary of us. Education warns. Warns, right. So somebody, uh, the right. we is collective here. The, war, the, the, we have to have that meeting again the organizational meeting to vote correct. on the rest of those correct. items. That's correct. Following that, the transition board will then warn a meeting for the election of the at the W whatever board. The UU board. Correct. The unified board. The potential is there to warn the vote, vote for the articles of agreement. Correct. The same time as that vote for the transition, the, the you the UU board. Sure. So that's yes. what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything yeah. about April 9th. I'm saying well, there's just going to be a lot of board, voting going on. Down right. Right. And board then there's going to be decisions they want to make. Right. And then there's going the to be a vote. Of, so right. anyway, for a budget. I, I had two things. One, I, I think we go with a local vote, mm -hmm. um, just despite if if what we hear is accurate and it'll become common knowledge. Um, I think our, my stance is there's still doubt because the Senate's just taking it up. Therefore, um, we, we want to pursue the parallel tracks of yep. either one, so we're covered either way. Yep. The other thing, um, and we've, we've heard this, I, I would say, from legal and from Bill, um, I, I'm comfortable issuing contracts because I, I want to avoid staff morale problems. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I, I would say it would be prudent to, to hold, ask Bill to hold off until, you know, the first week in April or closer to the 15th than earlier. I know in years past they've been issued fairly soon after budgets have passed. Yeah. Um, and that's been the administration's preference. Uh, I think it would be prudent to ask, I mean, we can only ask for the contracts at East Montpelier, but that they, um, that we hold off a bit on them and, and we have a communication with the staff to say, um, we're just trying to be prudent. It's our expectation that this is what, you know, that we're going to hire based on what our proposed budget is. Um, well, hell, we could just issue them anyway. I mean, I, for me, I'm, regardless of what direction this goes, um, I'm, and, and I know the, the concern of, that Scott voiced, but I'm still confident as a board member that our communities are going to support our schools. I am too. Um, and, and to me, I would rather risk having to make non-personnel cuts because we're operating on a lower budget then issue a whole lot of rifts or yeah. or but not issue contracts yeah. and create the turmoil within our staff i'd rather support our staff and take a and then as a board have to bite the bullet on how we're going to pay for it if there's a low budget to me i want us and i think this is what we were communicating at the saturday meeting we want to support our school. Our school is our staff. And I think we need to take a stance to say, we're going to issue contracts. And those contracts will have to be honored. And if there are budget consequences, we'll have to, we'll have to meet those budget requirements outside of staff. 
I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I'll, the only thing I'll say is we need to actively uh, engage with that merged budget number because that merged budget number is going to be a bigger number than they've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And it's to me, that might cause concern for, for members of the community. And we just need to be active to explain that it is the merged bu budget and effective the effective rate of the taxes is not, you know, it's it's based on it's what based was already on, going to be voted right. by each town. Right. So I just, you know, I just want to, that, sh that sticker shock, I think, could be there for some of our, our road voters. So I just want to make sure we're active. I, I don't disagree. We're not there yet. But, yeah. you, you, but you can, you, the community can be educated that if there's a unified union, it's going to be one budget. Right. And it'll be everything right. clumped together. And how that's clumped together and what the exact number is, isn't truly known we have right. we anticipate that it will resemble everything clumped together um, can i ask what you're envisioning april 9th to look like in the past you it's always been on town meeting and you've done such a nice job presenting and explaining and answering questions about the budget so i'm just wondering how, so how in depth you went in or you're planning to do that tomorrow. We're doing we that it. tomorrow. Okay. We did that on Saturday. It's exactly the same as it's done in the past. Okay. Yep. So, you know, I think frankly what just operationally we're holding a vote a month later than when the presentation was done. Good. Okay. That's great. Um, Will we still be able to use the school? And for that vote, or will we? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's the whole thing. Yes. Okay, yes. so we have to use that. <laughs> it's not a question. <laughs> Although the 5th is an in service day, but. Well, that's <laughs> a Friday. That's a Friday. No. No. That would, would be a lot easier, wouldn't yeah. it? If the the, the only thing I might suggest, okay. Ruben, since I won't be there, is it might make sense um, to have that discussion with Rosie. Warn right the up school front. board part and have that discussion immediately. You could prep her ahead of time that look, we're going to ask you this. Uh, I don't know if that even needs to be asked. If it's just anyway, um, it would be good to have confirmation prior or at the very beginning or prior to the school board presentation tomorrow at town meeting that Rosie says, yeah, April 9th is doable. Well, the select board meets tonight. I don't know that they could tell you. So then. So then um, that it's could really be shared. Rosy. It's just then you could accurately share that with the community yeah. instead of um, we think we're going to do it on the mm -hmm. night, but we're waiting for more. Yeah. It, it, if, if, if the question was asked and Rosie says, yeah, that's doable, if that's what you want, right. we can do it, then you can announce to the community yeah. that, that that's we're going to warn right. this. And then it can be a discussion. Um, what I would suggest is have a good idea that Yes, this is going to be warm. It's it's very plausible. There will be additional votes, additional meetings. We know for sure now that the uh, whatever the hell we want, whatever the heck we want to call it, the one that was adjourned now needs to be warned and reconvened. Is that the correct? Needs to be reconvened and um, see where that goes, and then. If that goes through the steps, you know, just prep the community that there's going to be more coming down the road. If, if nothing else, that board will have to be reconvened um, in all likelihood. So to just have as much specific information as can be shared with the community. And if there is no specific information, I'm really cautious us just to say we don't know. Yeah. We're so, working as hard as we can to get the information. Cannot answer that question. Today. Watch for so, information on the date. But so, be real, you know, don't speculate, don't guess. Say, we, we don't know. Here's what we do know. So since the state issues that warning for the organizational meeting, do we are we in a holding pattern until they do that? Or does Bill, will Bill, somebody? That'll be Matt and Bill and those guys. Okay. Executive committee. It's not East Montpelier Elementary School well, Board that's going to that. I just want to. I think the issuing of the contracts also brings it back to the focus on the school and our staff 
versus all the other noise that's been out there. And there has been a lack of, it's about the kids. It's about you know our schools. Um, and that issuing the contract shows our commitment to, we're going to make it work, no matter what comes down from what court or from where. I, I mean, just the, the political situation we're in, where it's you, I think we just need to be really, really mindful how we say things. And um, I don't think we want to frame it around we care about kids. And then therefore, if you're not doing what we're doing, you don't care about kids. Uh, Lindy, that's the way it's, uh, and what I'm saying is, frame it around, we support. We support our school. We want our staff to know that we're gonna hire them. And I'm not saying that people are saying it's not about the kids. I'm saying that the focus hasn't been on the school and the Correct. kids, and it should be. And we want we want to focus on the school and make sure it's operational and running, and we fully expect to issue contracts. Yep. That yep. kind of a thing. To say, for, for what we have control over, this is what we anticipate. And the doing. culture is And the community important. hears it, and the staff hears it, mm -hmm. and here's our intent. And that's why we, a major reason we wanted to meet with a lawyer, that we didn't hear anything legally that precludes us from doing it. Right. Um, it's fair to share that there's some risk, um, but we're complete, as a, as a board, we expect we're going to be comfortable taking that risk. Because we want our staff to hear loud and clear that we, we support the work that they've been doing all the way up to improving math. Um, we support the work they've been doing. I'm sorry, Lisa. Um, and, you know, we're going to figure out a way to do it. And at least by issuing contracts, we can do that. And that assures the staff of, and that assures that there's classroom teachers and everything that needs to happen. That will mean a lot. Because we don't want people out looking for a job because they're worried about that. When we have a great staff. Yeah. And then we just have to, you know, I think we need to understand that we're the ones taking the risk. Yeah. Not personally, but as a board. Yeah. You know, if then we, you know, God forbid we got to operate at 87 percent, we got to operate at 87 percent. The cuts yeah. don't come from personnel, and that's the way it's yeah. going to be. But it, like I said, I, I don't, even worst case scenario, I don't think that's what we'd be faced with. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Does anybody else have any further discussion? 9.30, we start? We start at 9.30. Yeah, the right dongle. I would have to, I know we're anxious, but I would have one more suggestion. That a, a communication to the community be formalized and a communication to the staff be formalized. Okay. But as the lawyer recommended that there be a memo to go with the contract. I, I don't think it's a kind of, you know, whip it off in 30 minutes kind of thing. I think it has to be very thoughtful, well-written. Um, <coughs> so I, 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 having said all that, but I'm not the person. <laughs> I'm not um, volunteering to do it, but I'm happy you to. Do you think something like that would be consistent across the schools if there was a memo that went with contracts? From I don't want to wait. To go across the school is going to require time. Well, the contracts don't come out until April. You wanted a memo to go to staff before then? You were talking about a memo with the contracts, is what the attorney said, but you're talking about something different. I'm talking about something sooner. Saying that we support you, or we're giving contracts. Something along that line. Could that not just come from Alicia in a staff meeting? It's, we're saying it, not Alicia. It should so be our my words. my staff last night was that this meeting is happening this evening and I would let them know the outcome. I can be very brief and not, you know, I can just give them the summary of it. And then if you want to send something later, I think that would go a long way. But okay. just to know. So there's value there if the board makes is, a, but a statement. For them to know now how I was going to say, I, I think you should tell them. Yeah. 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 
the conversation could just be there'll be a formal memo coming with or prior to the contract. I'm happy and that would that. give an opportunity okay. if there was going to be something across. Okay. If different yeah. districts wanted to issue a similar thing. People did need to go on break worrying about their jobs. I mean, that's, that was their reality when they left. Yeah. I just, I mean, the contracts haven't been issued. No. They wouldn't have no. been this early. No. So, but still, I mean, <laughs> well, are we telling Alicia we're going to issue contracts based on our proposed budget? Yes, that's, that's what we're saying. We're saying. Yeah. I hear that saying. clearly. Okay. Uh -huh. And because of that, people would have already known by now, right? Yeah. They would have already been wondering whether the budget would pass on town meeting if they were. Right. We would have had, those, Bill and I would have had conversations with staff in December if, right. if they were in question. There was a concern. Right. Right. That would have already happened. So right. we're, we're authorizing them to tell the staff that our plan is for everyone who was expecting the contract will we'll receive a contract. Based on the, yeah. So I'm at the risk of pulling us into the weeds again. It makes me wonder if we want to wait till April 15th or if we just issue. The, well, uh, typically that's done so. across the SU by yeah. bill, so. And we need a budget to be voted on by the town. So the no, we're that's that's in this case it, it doesn't. It no, doesn't that's matter. where we're okay. in the sort of. But, but you will have had a budget voted on. Right. So on now you will, it will by April fifteenth on the 9th. We if we oh, are able to hold it on the ninth, we would okay. know by then. Mm -hmm. So we'll know tomorrow morning whether it's feasible to have a vote before we need before to agree to the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No. We don't need to vote it on a budget to issue contracts. That's what we heard today. Right, right. but you will, that whole timeline will work out for East Montpelier regardless. Presuming that it passes, mm -hmm. right. Our intention is to issue contracts. No, because there still might not be a contract after. Right. It might go away in the middle of June, okay. yeah. and there'll be a new budget. Right. What we're saying is without a budget, we're going we're gonna to offer contracts. Right. And then we'll figure out how to pay for it. Right, which brings me back to my without original a budget. question about whether we... <clears throat> okay. I, I, it's, I think the sense of the group is pretty clear. So I don't know. Because if, if, we if we were in agreement that we were going to go to a unified union, I'm looking to you, Scott, and if everyone's okay if Scott has specific input. But if there wasn't a problem and we, there wasn't disagreement, it's not a problem, it's a disagreement. If there wasn't disagreement, it's likely there wouldn't be a budget vote until late April, early May, mm -hmm. and we have to issue contracts on April 15th. Mm -hmm. We would be issuing right. contracts We're doing without a budget. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So although in the past there's typically been a budget approved, mm -hmm. if we issue contracts, they're valid contracts. Right. They've got a job. Right. Then yeah. it's up to the board to figure out how the hell to right. pay for it. Right. Right. Um, but right. I think what you've heard clearly here is East Montpelier Board intends to offer contracts yes. yeah. to those people that were expecting contracts. Yeah. And if it presents a budget problem, it's our responsibility to sort it out. We'll have to figure it out. Big sounds. <laughs> For us, just fully understand a what really we've told big, Alicia. A really yeah. big so harvest. <laughs> we're going to issue contracts. <laughs> we know how okay. nice. um, Does anybody else have anything more? before we adjourn. So I will ask that we adjourn at 6.56. 5.56. 5 .56. 5 .56.